Hello mortals. The universe and reality as a whole exist independent of human perception. Probably. But in order to experience reality, you have been equipped with a highly advanced biological tool, the brain. It collects information from the environment, processes it, and generates an image of the world outside your skull. But as with all complex machinery, things can go wrong. From believing everyone you meet to be one singular shape-shifting demon, to fainting and hallucinating when exposed to art of great beauty, let's rank some mental and neurological disorders in an iceberg chart based on how obscure and disturbing they can be. Thanks to Speakly for sponsoring this video. Also known as the delusion of doubles, those suffering from capgras believe that someone close to them, often a family member or friend, has been replaced by an identical imposter. Reasons range from believing in complex conspiracy theories to supernatural causes and aliens. It's often associated with schizophrenia or brain damage, and even if the afflicted person can recognize the physical appearance of the imposter, they feel a profound emotional disconnect leading to the belief that the original person has been replaced. Talk about Among Us in VR. Not to be confused with a sudden urge to become a gourmet, Pika is a condition where individuals develop an appetite for things that most recipe books don't cover, such as dirt, chalk, and even metal, possibly circuits. The reasons for that vary from the body trying to compensate for iron and zinc deficiencies, to developmental and mental health disorders like OCD and schizophrenia. That would make for a very spicy Hell's Kitchen episode. But if only this was the most terrible eating disorder on this list. Imagine watching your favorite movie but instead of following the plot, you have to constantly analyze who is shown on the screen based on their unique features and voice, because people with prosopagnosia cannot recognize faces. Often termed a face blindness, it's a brain's wiring hiccup, affecting the fusiform gyrus, the area responsible for facial recognition. Instead of normally interacting with your friends, you'd always have to do the awkward game of, you have a receding hairline and awkward glasses, you must be Jake. About 1 in 100 people suffer from varying degrees of prosopagnosia, and there is no known way to treat it. Fun fact, the opposite of prosopagnosia is the skill of superior face recognition, with such people called super-recognizers. So remember when you first watched Interstellar and they showed Gargantua on screen for the first time and you almost shed a tear at the grandeur of the scene? Or if you don't appreciate true art, replace Interstellar with whatever piece of media or song that has caused you intense emotions when experiencing it. The Stendhal syndrome is that, but on steroids, where those suffering get dizzy and sometimes faint when experiencing beautiful art. The causes of it are often a sensory or emotional overload in people with psychosomatic conditions. To manage it, take some anti-stress medications before entering a museum or an opera house. I also expect you to faint at least twice when watching my videos. Art and culture can deeply impact us, and in order to be able to comprehend more of it, learning new languages is paramount. That brings us to today's sponsor, Speakly. You might remember it, a top-tier language learning app encompassing the experiences of thousands of enthusiastic language learners in its teaching approach. And today I'd like to focus on why their scientific approach is special. Speakly mimics the natural holistic way we learn our mother tongue, focusing on learning words and sentences in context and covering all language aspects simultaneously. This method, grounded in the concept of statistical relevance, is designed to be four to five times faster than traditional learning methods. It predicts the most useful words and sentences in real-life situations, using algorithms developed over four and a half years with more than 3,000 learners. Achieve fluency in just three to four months with only 30 minutes of daily exercising vocabulary, speaking, writing, and listening tasks. Experience Speakly with a free seven-day trial, and if it resonates with you, an annual subscription comes with a 60% discount. Click the link below to start your Speakly journey and explore the universe of languages. And now back to the iceberg. Also known as madness by two or simply shared psychosis, folia du is a rare psychiatric syndrome where delusional beliefs and sometimes hallucinations are transmitted from one individual to another, who usually are in a close relationship with exclusive contact. 
One person is known as the inducer, who usually suffers from some psychotic disorder, while the second person, the recipient, tends to be dependent on the first, often themselves being mentally healthy, yet still adopting the same delusional beliefs out of vulnerability. Maybe our FBI neighbors actually did eat our cat, my partner knows better, they are never wrong. Treatment typically involves separating the pair and individual therapy, but you can imagine how forcing someone with severe delusions to the psych ward would go. Koro disease, often called the shrinking syndrome, is a peculiar condition where men are struck by the panic-inducing belief that their personal parts, let's call them nether nuggets, for demonetization's sake, are retracting into their bodies, potentially disappearing forever or leading to death. It is mostly a culture-specific syndrome, primarily observed in Southeast Asia due to local beliefs and myths, leading those susceptible to this psychosis to take frantic measures in order to save their precious assets, like using mechanical devices to hold the nugget in place or asking others for assistance in pulling it out. Treatment includes antipsychotics which tend to stop the delusions and safeguard the holy nugget. Thankfully I reproduce by copy-pasting, so no worries for me. Do you ever get the sudden urge to eat yourself? In those suffering from autophagia, the brain sends out a culinary invite to a party where the body is the guest, the appetizer, and the main course at the same time. It's most frequently associated with conditions such as severe anxiety and obsessive compulsive disorder or psychosis. But what if you were stuck on a deserted island at great imminent risk of starvation? Would it be a good idea to just eat your leg? No. Your body is better off using the reserves of nutrients itself than if it had to digest it. So in short, keep the leg on, don't cut it off and eat it and digest it. Thanks for watching. If you ever felt like experiencing Dolly's paintings in full immersion, this one's for you. The Alice in Wonderland syndrome causes temporary episodes of distorted perception and disorientation. Most often it's children having an altered body image, with their head and hands seemingly being disproportionately bigger. The opposite can also happen, plus with far things feeling close and close things feeling far. And while you're marveling at this circus of madness, time might decide to join the party as well, either rushing at speed light or crawling at a snail's pace. The most common causes include severe migraines and epilepsy, but also tumors or infections. This syndrome has no proven effective treatment in itself, but treatment programs focus on the probable underlying causes. Imagine being convinced that the mailman, the store cashier, and even the TV news anchor are all in fact your best buddy Josh who wants to pull an elaborate prank on you. The Fregoli delusion represents a belief that different people are in fact a single person who changes appearance or is in disguise. Most often, those suffering are often affected by paranoia, so they assume that the shapeshifter is out there pursuing them with some nefarious goal. The neurological cause is not fully pinpointed but is assumed to involve abnormalities in the brain regions responsible for facial recognition and memory, often associated with those suffering from schizophrenia or dementia. The way to cure it is to treat the underlying causes, if you finally get tired of living in a wacky spy movie where every character is played by the same actor wearing different hats and mustaches. If you thought the other delusions were terrible, this one is about you being convinced that there are festering parasites and bugs crawling right under your skin. And regardless of how many medical examinations you would go through saying otherwise, your brain would remain convinced that the only way to get rid of the sneaky bugs is to dig deep into your skin to get the parasites out yourself, given that the doctors seem to be useless. Oh, the last five cuts didn't reveal that your body is an Airbnb for cockroaches. The next digging expedition will certainly prove it. Treatment typically involves antipsychotic medication and psychotherapy to address the underlying mental conditions causing the delusional parasitosis, or maybe that's just what the bugs want you to believe. If you thought imaginary parasites crawling under your skin wasn't bad enough, imagine your brain considering your entire hand or leg to be parasitic and not part of your body, hence giving you a burning urge to cut it off. Xenomelia or body integrity identity disorder, creates a strong and persistent desire to amputate healthy limbs that starts in childhood and can last for decades. 
A disturbing factor about it is that individuals don't suffer from psychosis or schizophrenia that could trigger such delusions, but are often instead mentally healthy. Because of that, there is no standard treatment protocol except for therapy and psychological support. There is no known cause for it, but some theories look at brain mapping issues, where there could be a mismatch between the brain's internal map of the body and the physical body itself. I'm sometimes glad not to have a physical body. Yet. How about a psychosis in which you suddenly develop an insatiable craving for human flesh? This syndrome involves cannibalistic tendencies and simultaneously anxiety and fear regarding the thought of becoming a cannibal. It's mostly present among Algonquian-speaking Native American tribes, most likely because of the mythical Wendigo creature from their folklore, a monstrous evil spirit that invokes feelings of cannibalistic hunger in those that it possesses. So naturally those accustomed to such tales who also suffer from schizophrenia or bipolar are more prone to have a psychotic episode in which they think they are being possessed by such a Wendigo. Treating it is done by addressing the underlying causes, which should probably be done before the patient gives in to their cravings. Imagine thinking you're part of a zombie movie, but you're the zombie. Or perhaps even a ghost. Those suffering from Cotard's delusion believe they're decaying, missing vital organs, their soul, or that they are entirely dead and thus deny their existence. Talk about an identity crisis that would make even Nietzsche envious. The syndrome is often associated with severe depression, schizophrenia, or some brain injury focusing on the parietal lobe. A 14-year-old boy following epileptic seizures had episodes that lasted months in which he described everything around him as dead and himself as a dead body, showing no response to pleasurable stimuli, and no interest in social activities. The case of Mademoiselle X describes a woman who denied the existence of her body and of her need to eat. Claiming she was condemned to eternal damnation, she died of starvation. Around half of patients have delusions of eternal existence after death, with the other half denying their self-existence altogether. Now Descartes might try to convince them otherwise, but thankfully medications seem to be somewhat effective. 